What's up everyone, welcome back to another private lesson. If you guys are wondering what the hell do you mean another private lesson, I've never seen this before. Well, I used to do this show one and a half years ago, that's when my last episode was and decided to bring it back. Basically what I do, Twitch subscribers are allowed to send in replays of losses of their games that go wrong on a certain topic. For example, how on earth can I beat mass stores, how can I beat DTs, etc, etc. And then I will review over them to like a basically a quick public coaching session. Uh, on one replay go over the mistakes find out what we can do better and uh, help you improve just like that so polar bear over here is a 4k terran says he's pretty good against bio but struggles with mech i quote doesn't understand the crap about it uh, they just make tanks and battle cruisers and then i die so that's it um which is probably pretty relatable for a lot of you guys i know mech is a little bit more common uh, in diamond league than at the absolute pro level so here we're gonna analyze it see what we can do better should be a lot of fun, honestly. I think uh, I've played a lot of mech myself. I think I have a pretty good understanding of how to play against mech. As well as how to play mech from uh, from my POV, so that's good. Looks like we went for a gas first here. So maybe we're even going to see some Hellions. Uh, that would be, uh, you know, my taste at least. If I would see gas first, I would like to see Hellions. And the other side, we have a mech player playing Marine first. I do have to say, whenever I see, you know, quite literally players that are not pro play mech they always do it in a very weird way um just to be straight if you want to play mech against terran that's fine but what mech gameplay looks like against terran is quite literally the exact same as bio up until the point where you make your factories like the opener is always exactly the same you go one 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 you get your ravens and tanks and then you play mech right uh, but when i see these builds mech players always do something weird like this guy already opened with three marines, for example, uh, which is a, a very strange build. If you would go for a good amount of Reaper Hellion, you could already punish this. Like any standard build would already be good against this. Um, and that is probably, um, yeah, a, a strength of just executing a normal good build. I feel like a lot of times you would be able to punish this. Now, obviously, uh, we went for a Reaper Expander, which means there's nothing in particular you can do. Uh, let's see if we're actually gonna go for hellions that would definitely make the most sense here to me obviously normal these days you would go for a barracks first right before the gas so if you do gas first it has to be a specialized build hellions first and i honestly think there's nothing wrong with this by the way i really like my hellion openers i played myself as well so uh, yeah this is a, a, a gameplay to my heart if we're just gonna go in gonna lose that reaper uh, if i can give you one tip here already is that if you go up into a ledge, especially when it's double, you always want to check if there's units up here. So what you would do is you would either move your Reaper like this to see if there's units there. Or if they don't reach, you can jump up here and jump down. Uh, and then you don't have to lose your Reaper for free, basically. Uh, scanning here, for example. Scanning is absolutely awful to do. Uh, I can actually show you why. Scanning is awful to do in this position. Uh, in early game, scanning is just too expensive. You never want to scan early on. And especially now with this build you're doing, as you can see now... You didn't even have the money to make a depot, which means you're already going to be supply blocked just because of that scan already. Um, well, not necessarily because of that scan, but what you usually do is you cut one SCV to make the depot. Uh, but it's all right because you have money. But now you're going to miss out on the money because of the mule and you're going to live in a lot of poverty. Uh, you see, you, you can't afford any Hellions right now. Uh, it already looks a little bit worse. Try to definitely avoid scanning at all times, at least before like seven minutes or so. Uh, most of the time, you do not want to scan that early. So we are going to go for a Liberator here. Um, uh, one thing that surprised me that you're making a lot of Marines from this barracks. I think it's actually not necessary. T TVT, I have to admit, it's a little bit of a weird matchup. Uh, something you would do in TVT very frequently, for example, is skip Marines to get your third CC faster. Uh, obviously, the most important units are always going to be the Ravens and Tanks and Vikings against uh, Terran. So if you can skip a few marines here and there to get a CC faster, so that's fine. In this case, I uh, could have made that tech lab a bit faster to switch it over. Now, one thing, because your opponent's playing mech and he's doing this very weird build with his eBay and stuff, I don't think this is going to come into play. But technically for TVT, or generally for TVT, you never want to build your buildings here, all right? Um, if they siege here and your buildings are here, you will literally lose the game. You will lose every single add-on, you have to fly all of them away. And it's just a disaster. In TVT, nowadays, sometimes really good Korean Terrans even build their first building a bit further down. Uh, but making your building here is okay for the wall-off. But these follow-up buildings in Adels <laughs> definitely build them a bit further back. Because, yeah, one tank seats here and you, 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 it, it will end you. You never want to be in a position where that's the case. 
Okay, so Liberator is going in. Hellions are going to accompany. A little bit late on the Hellion move out. Um, once again, this is a strategy that I do like. So that's awesome. Macro looks pretty all right so far. Now we're going to make a Raven after. This looks good. Uh, I would definitely recommend getting a 30C instead of this barracks over here. I think in TVT, honestly, if your opponent plays well, there's not much you can do with an extra barracks before a third command center. And especially when you would do a build when you make eight Hellions before Marines, you're not going to get a good enough Marine count anyway to be able to do any kind of attack, right? So this barracks would definitely be nicer if it was a third CC. Um, and then you would just put this barracks on the reactor instead and get Marines from the reactor that way. Like keep in mind the tech units in TVT are always the most important. So if you, if you don't have extra barracks to make Marines early on, that's totally fine. You just want tanks basically and Ravens. Hellions get repelled by the tanks. Liberator goes in. Still looks like a very nice setup. I don't even know. Does he have any anti actually? Just has a bunch of Marines, right? Five Marines, yeah. Like this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Uh, those weird mech builds people do. Like, who doesn't have anti air for this at five minutes with a normal build, right? This is a, but like, this is a very diamond mech player thing. You could have even kept that liberator there because he literally had no unit in sight. Even though I completely understand that he moved it away, of course. And now he's making eight turrets. I feel like, honestly, when you see these turrets go down, you already probably start to have an idea like, all oh, right, it's one of those guys, right? When you're back at home, you did get a raven, second raven on the way. That's very good. Always going for the two ravens is nice. Sometimes you can go for one or three, but I'm happy you're at least trying to go for the Raven. I do get that complaint a lot, like, I don't know how to use my Ravens, I don't want to make them anymore, but it's good to see that you're still committing to making Ravens. That's uh, very nice. But the 30C is going to go down now a little bit late than I would have hoped, but honestly, it's fine. You killed a lot, how many SVCs? You killed like eight or something? Yeah, eight SCVs. You're going to be up by 10. Honestly, a fantastic position. Your opponent does have a third faster than you, so he might actually catch up in the SCV count. Um, but so far so good uh, yeah one, one thing you can do here with your Hellions by the way you can literally just keep them here all the time because Hellions are fast they escape from everything they're basically meant to give you map control right <coughs> excuse me Liberator goes in this honestly all looks fine so far uh, just yeah make sure you keep the Hellions here like you know the only thing that can happen uh, is that you really don't pay attention and you lose them but I guess that is a skill you have to practice, but the map control is very important. You want to see if they're moving out with any kind of tank attack. Like once again, this guy is doing a weird build, but all you saw was that he had very early tanks, which means that he has more tanks than you. At least he should. I don't think he does. No, well, he has one more tank, uh, but he should have more tanks than you. So the only thing that's scary is if he actually pushes out right with tanks and your Hellions can spot that and you can put an end to that real fast. Now, at this point, there's not much to do. Uh, obviously, he's just set up on two bases, so you should focus on your own economy. You have a third barracks going down, double eBay. It's a pretty nice follow-up. Uh, this gas is a little bit late, by the way. Uh, normally, you just take that gas right away after your third command center. This game, you may even have to take it before because you did delay that third. But normally, third command center, fourth gas instantly. Like, as you can see now, you are not uh, able to afford add-ons you know, tanks, uh, Vikings and stuff at the same time. And that is because you missed out on that fourth gas. Now the SCV count looks fine so far. We're going to get two more barracks. I think we can actually skip a little bit here because uh, what's going to be most important now is how you're going to follow up from here. Aliens are moving around. Oh yeah, one thing I would like to touch on a bit as well is that, like I said, mech builds are often weird, but a general weakness of mech, and I know this is going to sound weird to you guys because mech feels like the ultimate defensive composition, right? But a big weakness of mech is actually that you usually die to stuff early on. Um, like later on when you get your mech army together, it's very strong. Before that, it's very weak. And the explanation for that is honestly quite simple. It's because mech gets their production a bit later. And like I said, even if you play bio or mech, your opening is the same. So the difference between mech and bio is quite literally that the bio player has marines and the mech player doesn't. So your army should always be bigger than the mech player early on. Um, yeah, which means they have a weakness. So you're going to go for a drop. I really like this choice. Especially be considering you haven't seen any ravens. Dropping is always good. Uh, I do see a quick mistake here that I don't want to ignore. So your opponent's playing mech. Honestly, you've seen a lot of signs that he's playing mech. Especially the super hardcore turtle with the turrets. If you want to confirm that it's mech, by the way, you can actually scan for that. That is the first acceptable scan timing, usually. Is if you want to see if it's mech or bio, right? 
And if it's mech, these are 100% tech labs, okay? Marines, it's kind of similar to play against Protoss. If they have a lot of Colossus and you only have Marines, you will get shredded. You do need to make Marauders for that macro game. Uh, so definitely make sure that those are actually tech labs the next time. I ideally, at this point, by the way, you would still cancel them to make tech labs if you see this. Now here with this drop, you're actually making uh, a little bit of a mistake. A Terran with Siege Tanks is pretty much always going to have enough to deal with this. For you right now, there's no reason not to just stim in here and kill everything. Like these, all these SCVs should be dead, plus the command center. Like the fact that you're staying here, you lost half your marines already. And even here, you're still not going into the mineral line. Like drop is pretty bad against mech. Their units are slow. Their units have to siege to deal with you. You could have just keep running for all those SCVs should have been dead, minus 14 SCVs or so. Uh, plus the command center, maybe even the armories cancelled, etc. That could have been a little damage. In the end, you did not really do anything. Um, that was a little bit strange on the movement there, I have to admit. So back at home, let's see how the macro is. You know, we've skipped a few SCVs over the course of time, but... Honestly, I feel like you should always compare yourself to opponents of your level. And you can see that your macro, honestly, is doing completely fine compared to his. So there's nothing to complain about there. Now, okay, finally we're gonna... Did we cancel them? Oh, you did actually cancel them. Nice. Good job on that one. Really happy with that. So you are gonna get some marauders on the way. That's very nice. Now you are still producing tanks. That is also pretty important. Uh, one thing to remember in TVT, I wanted to touch on it earlier, but there was a lot going on, so I forgot. Is that since mech is weak in the early game, you can totally move out with your first two ravens. That's what I wanted to touch on earlier. Uh, if they have two tanks sieged here and two tanks sieged here and two tanks there, you can just disable two and kill them. And just the same, everyone has siege tanks, so here, if you siege a few tanks here, deny his gas, kill those turrets, that's also an awesome move. In TVT, if someone is hardcore camping, you can actually always get some damage done still because you're, uh, you know, you're also playing Terran, you also have siege tanks, regardless of if you're playing uh, mech or bio. Losing that raven there is a little bit tough. Now one thing that I do notice is that you're very low on the air count. Uh, normally you would always make a bunch of vikings, you could have also made medevacs. But you actually just don't have any air utility there, which is a pretty big deal. Like I, like I said, a big weakness of mech is actually those drops like you did. Uh, I know you did lose two medevacs, right now you probably lost the third one, I guess. Um, but if you, if you do a four medevac drop into the main, very often the game can just end. Because the way they have to defend it is, you know, siege one tank here, siege one here, then siege one here and here. And everything here is just already dead. Especially if your unit count looks like this. Um... You usually want to be pretty 50-50 on Marines Marauders when dealing with mech. So the fact that you have 40 Marines and 3 Marauders means that a big drop into the main using like 30 Marines, uh, not just like throwing them away for a composition, but doing it in a good way while doing damage, that's a really good move. Like you can absolutely not take a big fight against mech when your army is 40 Marines and 4 Marauders, right? Like you definitely want to get at least 50-50 on those uh, Marine Marauder. Uh, let's see what we're doing back at home. You went for a second factory. Honestly, I think it's usually better to go for starports instead. The The win condition against mech, uh, because th this is something that's very unclear usually, right? You know, mech gets all the, the factories, all the starports, and they get an ultimate army, and it's hard to wonder, like, how do we win? But the win condition against mech is very similar to against bio, uh, and you just end up in the same spot. Like, you pretty much have to play Sky Terran yourself, you get a lot of ravens out. You could also go for Viking Liberator, by the way, that's also an option, but ravens are usually the best. Uh, against mech... You actually usually go for Viking Liberator first because they also make Thors and then you go into Ravens later. So you do want to get that transition going in time. Like your opponent has been, uh, like obviously his macro has been not the greatest, I'll be honest, 125 supply. This is a time where he could start approaching being maxed and then you definitely want to start contesting the air control. So even though I do understand the second factory, um, Instead of the second factory and the extra barracks, I think it would be really nice if the starports went down a little bit faster. And besides that, you really should have been producing Vikings all this time, or at least go for Doom Drops with the Medivacs. Like, you just have no air units, you're just really not building towards the wind condition. Like, mech armies are just stronger on the ground, right? Like, if you have a lot of tanks, you can actually take good fights because you can stop them. Uh, but you do need to work to that wind condition at some point by building more starports. Uh, and that's what you're doing now, but it does feel a little bit late. Um, though it's especially because you haven't made air units yet. Like at this point, you easily could have been at 8 Vikings against 10. And then if you actually do get your extra starports up, you can overpower him pretty fast. A big strength, or actually the main strength, Bio has over mech. 
is that you can expand faster. Um, so what ends up happening is that you're both going to go towards Sky Terran, but you're usually going to be doing it off six or seven bases against just four. That's why you can overpower them, right? Um, if you're just going to make mass buy units try to fight on the ground, you could honestly be ten bases against four. Uh, you can actually still lose that. So, And here... Like I said earlier, the biggest move would have been to do a 4 medevac drop, get rid of those marines, because now you don't even really have supply to work on that late game. If you lost 30 marines here in exchange for his entire main base, uh, you could have been making so many vikings, so many liberators, and then you would have been totally fine. Right now what's going on is your opponent is making really high quality units. He's making pure tank viking battlecruiser. Well, you have marine marauder, basically, um, and that does, doesn't check out, right? And even up until this point, we still haven't seen a single air unit produced. You also could have gone for a second armory, for example. Uh, yeah, one thing that's not super important, but I want to touch on it quickly, is that you did stay at sub-70 SCVs for a long time. Uh, for bio, it's really good to actually go up to like 80, 85 SCVs really fast, because you can. You can take that fourth base really fast. Uh, one thing that you are doing really well here, by the way, is denying the fourth base. Um... Just sieging here, this is actually a very good move, the position is great. Uh, and there's nothing to complain about that, definitely keep doing that. But let's see how your defenses look. You only... wait, it's one tank, right? Where's the other tanks? Ah, there's two tanks stuck in the main there, okay, I was wondering. Um, yeah, not the biggest deal, you actually block them with this barracks, by the way. Just just for clarity, you, you may have clicked them somewhere at some point, but this barracks is actually what's blocking them. And now you're producing your first Vikings. Um, and just, you know, so you can see how late this is. Your opponent has uh, 10 Vikings and 4 Battlecruisers out already. And you're producing your first Vikings now. You've basically made a worse army than him faster. You were up 60 supply. But then you never used the army. Just sat in front of the base. Didn't try to get any trades. Didn't try to drop in the main. Didn't transition to a late game. You were basically just sitting there waiting for him to make a better army than you. And then kill you. And like... I feel like if you in this scenario, a base rate could be really good. This is actually very painful that you're not sieged here. Uh, sieging here could have actually won you the game. Both players are not sieging here. Let's see who sieges it the fastest. Red player is going to siege way faster. And yeah, at that point, this is, uh, I would say this is, what is it? 12 tanks, I believe. 12 tanks against 7 that are not sieged yet. This is an absolute disaster. And because you didn't transition to the late game earlier, you were not going to be able to recover from this. If you were actually sieged here, this fight was probably not going to be that bad, by the way. Um, because that's the strength of tanks. Like you were making earlier, I don't mind the tanks. This is the reason. If you have tanks, your opponent is still going to have a hard time pushing into you. Because your tanks will kill his tanks before they get there. Now, with the help of the battlecruisers, he would have been able to overpower you anyway. Because battlecruisers are honestly just very strong units in TVT. The only thing that really counters them is the raven. Um, but if you were siege here, this fight would have been alright. You could have backed off with the bio. In case now, you lost everything, and you're basically stuck with a very smaller version of the bio armor you had earlier. Uh, and you're not going to be able to defend anymore. Uh, another move you could have made here that would have been pretty good is make Vikings. Obviously, the, the air army always needs to be there. Always need to go for that air army, right? You could have been making Vikings, put the tanks into a good line of position here to hold them back, and counterattack with that bio. If you look at his base... His entire base would have died to bio. If you went from this angle over here, this base is dead. This base is dead. Uh, honestly, for some reason, he only has three bases. He never even tried to take a fourth base. This base would have died. And they have absolutely nothing left. Your tanks could have defended at home. Uh, and you could have built up more and more Vikings. And you would have been fine over time. Uh, and honestly, you had a lot of options here. And hopefully with this analysis you understand a little bit more what to do because what you did here i'll go over it one more time I, I think the last few minutes of the replay is probably not that interesting to me it looked like he would just a move over you um just to go over the most important points one more time is you made a really big army uh you, one thing you did really well by the way is actually add on marauders and no more marines so you leveled the composition a little bit uh you didn't make air units for honestly i would say six minutes or so a very long time you skipped on air units uh, you never really pushed your advantages too much. You didn't try to siege this. You didn't try to drop the main. When you did drop his main, you didn't use it that well. Then at the end, absolute disaster of a fight. After you were waiting for him to build a good army, you just sat here unseaged. Um, wasn't really aware of anything going on, it seemed like. And then here, you lost a lot of bio units. 
didn't try to use those buy units to create a counter attack. Even with this, you could have counter attacked, by the way. Definitely a better chance than going home because these units, honestly, they don't really have a value at home against 12 tanks and a bunch of battle cruisers, right? Um, and then I feel like you started doing the right thing. You're making Vikings. At this point, you probably should have been on five star ports, by the way. Uh, you usually go from one to three to five, but you had enough time to get to five for sure. So you could have been producing maybe one Raven and eight Vikings at a time. Uh, now you are doing the right thing. You're making a lot of quality units here. No Marines. Pure Viking tank Raven. Uh, but yeah, you just don't have enough production to deal with this at the end. Uh, and I know this kind of game makes it look like mech is very unbeatable. But I really feel like you were just a few decisions away from it actually going quite well, right? Like if you actually had the right amount of Vikings up. Because to be honest, this army he has is really nothing crazy. If you just have 20 Vikings... Which is actually, like, it sounds a lot, okay, I know, but it's very reasonable. If you have 20 Vikings and a few Ravens, this entire army would just die. Uh, and that's it, you know. And then at the same time, even while losing this base, you would be up a base. Because your opponent is a weird mech player um, that doesn't really expand and just tries to make one army. Uh, I think there were a lot of options here. And if you try again, I would really like to know how it goes. Let's see, yeah, I mean, there's nothing to be done against here. Battle cruisers, by the way, uh, just so you guys know. They're insanely good in combination with Vikings. And the main reason is not really their DPS. The main reason is that your Vikings will shoot their BCs while their Vikings are shooting your Vikings. So basically, their stuff doesn't die and your stuff dies very fast. That's why Battle Cruisers are actually scary in combination. If you look at this army, this is 8 Vikings and, and 6 BCs. You kind of have to look at this army as if it were 20 Vikings, basically. Uh, that's what the BCs add to that army. And against this, you can just make mass Vikings. If you do get up to a, a later tech, you can make the Ravens as well. Disable the BCs, making them pretty much completely useless. And right here, the fight you're taking is actually totally fine. He's on siege, but yeah. You just didn't have the time to get enough Vikings up, and that's it. Alright, well, yeah, I do hope you learned a lot from this replay. I know it's very frustrating to play against mech. I, I get these questions a lot. Um, but I do think there's a lot you, can, you guys can do better against it. It's, it's honestly a very strategic game. Um, just a few moves better and I think it would have gone really well for you. Alright, well I hope you guys enjoyed this first private lesson back. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Obviously leave any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.